Uh, it is um, September uh, 29th, 2015, and um, I guess I'm trying to keep you updated, Church, with what is going on here. Um, I'm not exactly sure I even understand what's going on. Uh, it seems like every single day it's a, it's a new situation with this... Um, with this gay community and this clan that has hidden itself and um, hits are everywhere um, I'm not exactly sure where to begin because I've tried to um, keep you up to date with what's going on but some of the hits that are coming up against me are um, I'm not exactly sure I just came back from Bank of America um, I'm getting hit at work um, I'm getting hit at home. Um, I'm getting hit at work. I'm hitting hit at home. I'm getting hit at church. Um, and I'm getting hit in my bank, uh, B of A. Um, and I don't know how to put an end to it. Um, at work, I can't, they won't hire me. Um, they won't hire me to to do any work they will not hire me to do any work um, the last time I worked was last week I believe it was Monday and um, the newscaster uh, from Channel 12 came out and indirectly there were several of them um, the gay community uses the newscasters to talk at me or um, to basically relate information to me in regards to, I guess, the, um, in regards to my, um, in regards to my, my work with Labor Ready, um, and this morning what they related was that, um, I lied to the manager, I didn't show up the second day like I had promised, um, and so on and so forth. I don't do that to my employers. I don't diss my employers. I need my employers or else how else am I going to make money? Um, if an employer hires me and then treats me like shit or treats me like garbage, I can't entrust myself to that employer again. I have to ask Labor Ready to remove me out of that situation because I feel like I've been violated. Um, I can't stay in in a relationship with a with an with with a with an agency or with a personal agency if it's not on a professional level and they're double talking me. Um, they can't say one thing with their mouths and do something else with their body or with their gestures. They can't double talk me because that's going to offend me. I come onto the job with a straight mindset and I come onto the job with a straight heart and when I see that they resemble someone automatically as I've been told um, by Melinda MacArthur that's the only person who translate or explains to me the nature of the gay community I don't know anything about them as a, as a people um, and what she explains is that if you recognize them then that's the gay community in other words they're there to represent people you knew from the 80s and the 90s because I don't know anybody new. Um, and so all the originals are now being represented by members of that community okay and so if I come onto a job um, and Labor Ready sends me on a job and I recognize those people's faces as not as strangers but as people that I knew from the past then automatically I know I'm dealing with a fact and he's expecting me to read into his face and he's expecting me to read into a fact that I'm we had once had a relationship in New York or in California or in Washington State I don't have I don't go in that direction with people okay I'm enduring it but I don't go in that direction with people to, con to continue or to further my relationship with the originals through now the community of homosexuals who have gathered all that information um, and now I'm supposed to just embrace them and treat them as if they're the originals. Um, the gay community makes it very difficult because they, they're determined to have me 
as one of their subordinate members. Um, and so they tell me every day you're not a leader um, on their side. No, I'm not a gay leader. No, I'm not a leader for the gay community. I don't stand with them as a community. I'm enduring them as a community. In other words, I'm putting up with their garbage. I'm putting up with their shit. I'm putting up with their, um, with the fact that they've completely taken control over my life. I, I can't do anything. I can't work a full-time job. Um, they're trying to get me to lose my job. And this is all because of my acquaintance with John MacArthur and his and the gay community on his property. Um, they've tried to, you know, on, because of him, I can't work a full-time job right uh, full-time job is not for me I have to work a part-time job because I'm on social security disability income I'm 44 years old and I'm on social security already I thought social security was for old people and I have to declare myself um, what is it called um, disabled because of a terminal illness that they gave me they hate me because they because what's the obvious I'm a black man from another country who didn't submit to the white supremacist mentality so they put me among homosexuals to control me. And, you know, and as a result of my not automatically subjecting myself to them, work, they're hitting me at work. Home, every night it's the same sexual assault from Gabriel Franklin or African women or the gays themselves when they come in here. I'm constantly putting incident reports with the management. And, I'm, and he's on the edge of throwing me out. And if, he, if his staff is not doing it or I don't know if he himself is or not. I don't know the man. And to me, he's a Sandra in the community. And I told him that. I, I, I don't know if that offends him or not. I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody. But when I recognize their faces as Gabriel's or Sandra's or Mary Ann's, those are people that I knew. And the community takes on that position. And on that level, they begin to judge. So I don't know what they're doing and what they're not doing. So I'm not aware of it. Okay. At home, I'm getting hit. Um, at church, I'm getting hit. It's the same thing at church, meeting people that I don't know. And instead of treating me like a stranger, they double talk, you know. And the second portion of the conversation always leads to me getting hit with something or by something or from someone on account of the fact that I've made contact with them somehow. Um, and then it becomes sexual. And I don't go for the sexual, but I have to comply. And as I've explained to other people, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You're damned if you don't comply and go to the places where they meet and do what they require. And you're damned if you don't. They can say, well, you didn't come out. In other words, we're identifying you as a homosexual. And we're going to make sure that you're on the homosexual leash. In other words, anytime you start preaching straight, talking straight, just on Sunday, my own personal ministry, they shut, John MacArthur shut down the computer so that the voice box would not record. I don't even know if this is recording. He has complete control. I'm like, we're back into colonial slavery days. This white man has complete control, access in and out. He, he acts like he's a god. He acts like he's a god under uh, with white supremacist authority, with homosexual authority, with government support. He acts like he's a god. It's an act. You know, I mean, everybody knows he's a piece of shit. And, you know, he pisses and shit like everybody else. But he acts and he's got this chip on his shoulders and... You know, it's all this huge facade. And um, and so, you know, whether at, at work, at home, at church, and, and now even in the banks. You know, um, after I leave work there, automatically they're giving me the, the sign. They're giving me the sign, right? Even the Jews have turned. The Jews have turned. Israel turned. They turned from the scriptures. And not only did they turn from the scriptures, they turned from um, from God. Israel turned from God. Um, and a lot of these people who call themselves Jews and Israelites, they bought into the community system. They bought into the community way of thinking. Um, the way the community deals with us as blacks is the way the Jews deals with us as blacks. Um, and so whether or not we are of the Christian faith, it doesn't make a difference. They treat us like slaves. They treat us like shit. And it doesn't make a difference to them. Right? And they're expecting us to comply. In other words, we'll give you our shit and then you take the hit. Right. And whatever the hit is, it, it's death. That's the reason why I can't get it. I can't get back on the I can't go back to seminary. Right. I can't get back to seminary life. I can't get back to work home life. They won't even allow me to leave this place to go rent a one bedroom apartment. I mean, I, I've been places where, you know, a couple months ago, the one bedroom apartment was what, 2012, one bedroom apartments were like five, eight. Then they switched it to five ninety. 
Then they switched it to 600. Now it's already 720. And it's almost like, where in where do they think we're getting all this money from? Or on Social Security Disability Income. Where are we getting all of this money from for us to be paying $700 a month on, 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 a, on an apartment when you're on, you know, you know what I mean? You're on disability income. And it's on purpose. You know, they're, they're charging me false amounts. Um, I don't know where the money's going, right? I don't know if the money's going, whose pocket it's going into. They're, they're charging me false amounts, excessive amount of money. Um, they're going into the bank account. They're removing money. Um, the tellers are purposely depositing money. Whenever I work for Labor Ready, the tellers are purposely depositing the money into the wrong account. If I say to them, deposit it into the savings, they'll deposit it into the checking. Um, if I tell them to deposit it in the checking, they'll deposit it in the savings. And then they want to make a transfer. And then there is a charge. And after the charge, then the transfer gets screwed up. And then there's another charge. And, you know, I just came back from the bank. Um, after I went to 122nd Street, Mr. Peep, you figure out what, what, what is a Christian preacher doing at Mr. Peep instead of being here and studying the Word of God. And when I'm here studying the Word of God, they turn on the sleeping gas. And I'm like this. So it's like, I, I can't, even with the window open, I can't study the Word of God. And when I do study the Word of God, MacArthur comes in and he takes the notes. And if the notes are not taken by him, they sabotage the computer. And if they don't sabotage the computer, they knock me out. And Gabriel comes in here, pierces me. Uh, I mean, it, it's almost like everything that they can possibly do to annoy the hell out of me, to keep me from a straight mind, to keep me from a church mind, to keep me from living. You know, it's like the Bible says. Um, I think it's 2 Timothy 2.12 or uh, 3.12. Uh, it says that those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. And what they do is they drain, they spend, you have to understand, this MacArthur and his people, he's a millionaire, okay? So he spends all of his time strategizing and thinking of ways to mess with my thinking. He's thinking, you know, he sits back and relax and he's got a team of people and he's got a team of men and everybody's under his authority. Uh, and, you know, and he's Mr., Mr., you know, debonair. You know, and he's got the whole world at his fingertips and, you know, he tells this one what to do in the bank and they do it and he tells that one what to do and he does it and everybody's, you know, wh whatever I want, I get. You know, he's the golden boy born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Okay, he doesn't know the meaning of going out there and punching keys for McDonald's. Um, I don't even think he's ever held an eight-hour shift job. Okay, since he started working at, as pastor teacher of Grace Community Church who's been taking care of him and wiping his butt since then. Anyway... The bottom line that I'm saying, I'm getting vulgar here because I'm pissed off at the fact that I'm having to sub sub serve these people as a heathen. You know what homosexuals do. You know what sodomites do, right? I'm having to serve these people and then I have to be judged by, the, I'm being judged by the so-called churches. I'm being judged by the clan, and I'm being judged by the gay community. And I'm being judged by gay brothers. Like everywhere I turn, it's judgment, it's judgment, 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 judgment. And it's like I can never do anything right. And then it hits me at home, it hits me at work, it hits me at church, it hits me on Sunday morning. Um, they're representing, you know, it, and it's like, wow, no wonder the guy committed suicide in 1974. If this is what he's having to deal with, you know, you go to a, a, a instead of being supported by the churches, I mean, cut down. Um, bank tellers are telling me uh, false names. Bank managers are giving me false names. Um, and I'm thinking, now I'm looking at going into Bank of America and I'm looking at the face of a manager whose face is an exact replica of Sandra DeClaron or Felicia from uh, West Shore Apartments. And I, I go into these taboo places and, and, it's those same, and it's the same series of people who are coming to get their ration of licking, beating, or however you, you, you say those things. You understand what I'm saying? So it's, it's almost like, how do, you, how do you deal with this, America? I'm an international. I wasn't born here. I don't think I'm ever going to figure you out as a race on that side. Why don't you do me and you a favor and remove me out of that community and let me have my straight life back. You gave me a certificate of citizenship. Honor the certificate of citizenship for the love of Christ. I mean, I'm, I, I'm professing Christ to you because that's who I am and that's what I believe. But you're making me out to be a liar here. You're making me out to be a liar. You presidents are a real big disappointment. I've gone to Bush and I've gone to Obama. I've even tried to talk to Clinton through the community and I don't even think he heard me. This is a huge mistake that you've made. 
You know, if you, unless it was done on purpose, and if you did it on purpose, brother, you need to repent from that. All of you who are behind John MacArthur and who are behind this solid hit need to repent. Every single one of you, males, females, black, white, Asian. I mean, the smell of shit does not invigorate me in the morning, in the evening, on my cock, or, you know, let me not get any more technical. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want it any more than you do. So whoever it is that, that keeps flaming that fire of opposing Kevin Duclaren, whoever keeps on throwing gasoline, right, on, 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 that, on that, you know, spark, let me, let me caution you and give you counsel now. Stop. Stop pursuing me through the, the, the gay community at my bank. I mean, again, I have to go in there and talk to the manager and explain to the manager that I'm being hit. And it's like, okay, was it my mistake? Was it my mistake that um, I'm being charged for? And I'm thinking, well, I didn't make any transactions, right? I didn't make any transactions. So why is it that I'm being charged? Am I overreacting, right? Am I overreacting? Am I the one making all of these transactions because Okay, one for September 1st. This is what they're doing. This is what they're doing. This is what the tellers are doing. They're, I would go to the tellers and I would tell the tellers, you need to make a deposit. This is how much I want in the savings. This is how, how, how much I want in the checking. And they would make the deposit. They would, I, I, would, I would say to them, I want 25 in the savings and $5 in the checking. They would make the deposit into the savings and transfer $5 out into the checking without thinking, without thinking that I only have three, three opportunities to make withdrawals. They don't see the transfer as a withdrawal. So every time they go in there, so I come in and I make a deposit. When I make the deposit, I say $25 into the savings and $5 into the checking. They deposit $25 into the savings. And then the $5, they transfer it out of the savings into the checking. That's one withdrawal. Next day I come in, I make a $25 deposit into the savings. And I ask for $5 to be transferred over to the checking. They do it. That's two withdrawals. Third day, fourth day, fifth day. What the tellers are not doing is computing in their mind that these transactions are what's messing me up. They're also hits. They're deliberate. They're deliberate hits. In other words, if the, if the account had been monitored or if the, how do I explain this? All right, it, it just dawned on me what's been going on with this account. Oh, oh man. Uh, it, it just, I, I apologize. I just, it just hit me what's been going on with this account. It just hit me what's been going on with this account. It's already 5.15, so I can't go in there now. Um, by the time I get there, it's going to be too late. So, um, I'm... Okay, it's making sense. Um, why this video? Um, I think just, just to share with the church that um, it's not fair that both church and state gang up on internationals for this thing that you consider to be community and expect people to submit to. It's not fair to us internationals when you both church and state working together to force us in the direction of the community when you as the church 
have been given the Holy Bible as the as the as the as the tool to use to um, to begin a relationship with God, to maintain a relationship with God, and to continue a relationship with God. Just like it is not fair for you as a government official to begin a relationship with us on the constitutional level or on the um, naturalization level, and then without our consent, without our agreement, you switch us over to some godforsaken community relationship where there is no boundaries, there is no protection from the law, there is no protection from the government, and it's sexually based. You don't ask us what we want in terms of sex. You demand from us and you tell us this is how it's going to be. It's not fair. This is why the video is it's not fair. It's not fair for me to lose my entire, I mean, I spent all my life preparing for ministry and now you just completely come in with your own gay clan agenda you take over and there goes Kevin Duclaron now everybody knows what I'm doing out there and why am I doing it because this is your way not my way this isn't the biblical way this isn't the naturalization uh, this isn't the international way when we internationals come here we don't have a gay clan agenda to follow but you do because that's what you use to take control over our personal lives you use that gay clan agenda to take over our personal lives at home, our education. You monitor how much education we have, whether or not we can have a PhD or a doctorate. You monitor whether or not we live in a, a, in a, in a homeless community, a studio, a one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, or house. You determine all of that as a community. But there is no book that explains to us the laws of living in your community. There is no book that tells us here is, here is, here is, the, here's the community manual, you know, how to live and function in and under a gay clan American community. Right? How to live and function in a in in and under a gay clan American community. So you know I'm running around and I'm getting instructions from this one, instructions from that one. I'm hearing this one. I'm hearing that one. And I got a voice in my head telling me one thing. And I got another voice in my head telling me something else. And then I come into a banking center. It's a whole different ball of wax. I come into a church and the, it, it it's just. It's too much. It's too much on one person to have to endure all of that. Too many mouths telling someone what to do and what they can't do. And, and then the person is being judged here. He just put out this fire and then another one starts. He just dealt with one issue and then another one starts and then this one wants sex and this one wants submission and this one wants a hit. And that one is just caught, it's like, we're going to catch up with you. We? You mean there's more than one of you? Oh yeah, all the people that looks like me is my community. Now there's all the people that look like you. Now it's not the issue is not just seeing uh, the fact that you're fags and and now I, I got to deal with all of you who have the same face. So I offend one person that has that face, and I got to deal with every single person, male and female, that has the same face, whether black or white, whether tall or short, whether dark or and and anybody that I come into contact with that has that face. That's the position of that community. So if I'm talking to a, a, a black person that looks like George Bush, right? That's George Bush's community um, position in my relationship with George, right? And if I go to the next door, I, I'm still dealing with George Bush, who is the president of the United States, who was a president. Of, now he's Asian and I have to read into it. And it's almost like, why didn't you give us one of these manuals when we came and when we became American citizens, right? Maybe you could have put a, a chapter in there. Here, there's a chapter on, here, here are the chapters, okay? The submission chapter, right? The subjugation chapter, right? Um, the same sex chapter. Um, the um, no touching or pursuing white women chapter, right? Here are all the chapters 
from this, and this is this is the community manual, right? Community manual. So you have a manual indicating and explaining to you the different chapters or, or the different positions that you as a community take. And this is this is how you function. Here's community law. Okay, so here's a chapter where there's community law. Right? In the Bible we have covenants, old covenant, new covenant, right? In the community, we there is no covenant. There is no there's no agreement between us and the community. So then how do you become the community if there's no commitment? If there's no commitment on my part, how did I become community? What door did I walk into that says community in it, that I became a part of it? And now I'm having to subject myself to it. Is it when I make gay contact with another man? Is it when I pursue a female um, who, who I think is attractive and turns me on and I want to get jiggy with her? Um, what is, it? is it when I ask a girl out? Or is it when I put out an application for a job? Is it when I become the member of a church? What door did I walk through that all of a sudden now I'm community? The international doesn't know that. The international is not aware of what door he or she has walked through that all of a sudden makes her community. And there's no definition of what community is. Right? Maybe there should be a chapter on uh, defining what community is. Right? And I mean detail. If you're the clan, you're community. If you're gay, you're the community. If you practice slavery, you're the community. Um, these are the characteristics of what community is and what community does. And you need to be detailed. You can't hide it under the carpet of the word that. Oh, I like that. That. What, what is that? What is the word that signifying? I like water. Huh? I like water. I like cups. Um, I like plates. What is the word that? You know, what is the definition? Um, there's no nothing concrete. Right? There's no there's nothing concrete. Everything is, you know, calling the they don't want to call the kettle black when it's black. They want to call it that. Oh, I don't like that color. What color is that? I don't like the black color. You you know? Community wants to control your money. They want to control your income. They want to control your church life. Oh well the community doesn't agree with him being one of the elders in the church. That doesn't work for the community. Maybe we're not community, maybe we're church, right? On my way to across the river today, on my way across the river today before I went to 122nd Street to do my American duty as an American, not as a Christian, not as a preacher, not as a leader in the body of Christ, not as a child of God, but as an American, right? So if you're born in America, you're community, I guess, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what makes a person community and what makes a person not community. I don't even know. I don't even think I understand the, the proper definition of the word community, right? Um, on my way to on my way to to this, I went to to visit a uh, an apartment complex where I was at. Right, and this is something really bug. I had just left uh, another apartment complex. Um, I was sent to work there once, and I thought, oh well, this place looks like a place that would rent to me um, a cheap apartment. Right, cheap meaning six, seven hundred dollars, uh, instead of a thousand to two thousand dollars, right, for an apartment. And I thought, okay, well, there are two apartments. Let me go to one, and then I'll go to the other. So. Somehow in the back of my mind, it was said, why don't you go to the bigger one first? And my conclusion was, well, I don't want to go to the bigger ones first because if I go to the bigger one first, um, it may be more, you know, to, to save face, it may be more expensive. So why don't I go to the one that I think is cheaper? They took offense at that, the community, the people that are in the background, who knows your thoughts, who knows how you think, who knows how you you know who knows everything that there is to know about you your mother your father your brother your sister since the day you were born where do these people get this knowledge and understanding i don't know but they're the community and they know it all so anyway i didn't go there first so i went somewhere else i went to the other apartment complex when i get to the apartment complex you know to my face they raised up they, they quoted me they quoted me the uh, the bigger apartment's price instead of their own price Today, I finally got the nerve to go to the other apartment. They added $200 to the 
to their um, to their original price. You know, and I thought to myself, why would I mean? What do you gain out of playing the role of community? I mean, it's like all of that is just to what save face. You know, lying to people about prices, lying to people about names, lying to people about information. What is the point of all the lies? Right? So I walked out of there and I just thought, well, I don't have nothing to say. There was a man in our apartment complex here who has an apartment, one bedroom. And I and I just chatting with him and I told him, oh man, I really wanted to see the one bedrooms and, and see what they look like. And so I asked him, can I see the one that you look like just to look at the structure of it? And he says, yeah, sure, come on in. So I went in and I looked at the apartment. And um, I said, okay, well, it's, it's a basic one bedroom, um, one bath apartment unit, right? And uh, in the back of my mind, I thought, well, gee, he told me, oh, well, I, I said to him, how much are you paying? He's like, oh, a hundred and some dollars because it's being paid by the government. And um, I thought, okay, well, you know, I, I, I crossed over to the other side to one of the apartment complexes where I was living at. And Several months ago, when I asked her how much it was, it was like six ten, six fifteen. Now it's seven hundred and twenty dollars. And I'm thinking, are you just saying that? Are you are you just saying that so that you, because that's your hit? Are you being for real? It's almost like this these people in this community mindset, they refuse to just release and let go of this being part of the community and redeeming this whole point of. Redemption, this whole redeeming community things make people do outrageous things. I guess that's where I'm getting at. It's like it's it's what people are having to do to so-called redeem themselves with with this community. You mean to tell me John MacArthur's been after this man for the last 17 years to redeem grace? What redeem grace from what? That hit what hit? What hit? I didn't touch the 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 the, 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 the community. I didn't touch the, the Klan. I didn't touch the gays. I didn't touch the African Americans. I didn't touch anybody. They gave me a four page letter. They told me to leave. I left, and that's that. Now, I mean, I, I mean I, I'm embarrassed to tell you some of the things I've had to do. I'm embarrassed to tell you some of the things that they've had me do. I'm embarrassed to tell you some of the things, the life that I'm living, which I don't approve of because I'm not community, right? Um, I'm convinced of the gospel. I believe the gospel. I believe the, the, the gospel with all my heart, but the problem is, how am I going to convince you, your community, and in, 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 your, in, in these buildings, your community, and I'm having to deal with you on the community level. When you read the Bible, what does the Bible call community? Unbelievers. What does the Bible call community? Unbelievers. Unbelieving, um, unbelievers who've been turned over. Unbelievers who commit murder. Unbelievers who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Unbelievers who deny the Christ. So then, if the community are the unbelievers, why are we the church? Or those of us that are professing to believe? Why are we in this embraced relationship with community? Right? With this community. Why are we in a relationship with unbelievers? Why, why is this? If we're supposed to be going in opposite directions, why are we doing this? And as soon as I start going in this direction, you know, I start, I, I, I can feel the pain, the hits and the pain on my back. I, I don't get it. I mean, I, I used to work in the 80s and the 90s. I didn't have a problem finding a job and keeping a job. Now there's, it's impossible to, just to get an eight hour shift. Because, oh, well, who is he working for in the community and does the community need it? And who in the community wants to hire him and wants that hit? It's a hit for him to be hired by the community, right? It's a hit for him to be hired by the community and to take that hit. Who wants that hit? Well, he needs the money. Well, we know, but it's a hit. Why hiring? Why is it hiring me as a hit? Oh, well, because you're a Negro who didn't submit. You mean to tell me when you hire African-Americans, they submit to you as slaves? When you hire African, what was was working with 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 uh, Obama and his wife, is that a hit for America? You mean it's not a it's not a plus? It's a it's a minus. That's a that's a that's a minus sign. That's not a plus sign. We're not making progress. You mean to tell me? I mean, how far back did we bring you or take you in making these Africans your 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 leaders, your presidents? How big of a hit was that? That's a solid hit, isn't it? Is that how we're really looking at the American continent? 
When the African steps up, it's a hit for the European? In any context, church or state? If that's the case, then we've got a lot further to go than I thought. Because we, we have not, we're still not there yet. I've kept out a lot of the details and generalized, but you know, on my way there today, um, I asked the question, you know, who, you know, is it your will as a community or God's will that I'm supposed to be following here? God has an entire agenda, right? God has an entire agenda lined up for us in the Bible. Whose will are we going to um, obey here? Theirs or ours, church? Are we following their will as a community or God's will as a, as a church community? Right? There's the world's community and there's church community. Who, who, whose will? If I don't do their will, I get hit. I get hit on that bed. I get hit on the, uh, on the, um, at work. If I don't submit as a as 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 a as a turnover, if I don't submit as a turnover, I'm hit. I'm hit at church. They're waiting for me at church. They're waiting for a congregation to hire, me so that they can give me a serpent. Now we we don't have to give them the sex. We can give them a serpent. Now we don't have to use Gabriel Franklin to give them the sex. We can give them a serpent. Now we don't have to go to Taboo because now he's a member of such and such church, right? It doesn't make sense to me. So is it your will as a community or, you know, is it your will, God, or is it their will? That, that, that was a question that I had. What is God's will, you know, and whose will will win? God's will or in each individual of our lives? Is it God's will that's going to win or their will, right? And I had to conclude that, you know, we're supposed to render to Caesar what is Caesar and render to God what is God. So then what exactly is it that Caesar what and what God wants? Right? You know, what is God's will? God's will is for us to make disciples. What is the world's will or America's will? You know, America's will, Americans' will for America. What is the American person's will for America, right? Versus God's will for humanity, right? Americans stand for America 24, 7, 7 days a week. It's all about all America. But God's will is for all humanity, right? Every nation and every tribe and every tongue. So God's will in the Bible is for man to make disciples. America's will is for us. In the community is for a man to make for us to be fags. Make fags, of, you know, is like take the take the gay guy, you know, gay guys going after straight guys. What was that show? Making making taking gay guys making straight guy. I don't know the name of the show. It's a television show. It's not a show. It's a reality. Gay men go after straight men to ruin their marriages, to remove them out of the marriages, and then to turn them on each other. This is what's going on in America today. The gay side is basically, now they have the right to marry. They go into marriages and they sabotage the marriage. They sabotage the church. They destroy um, the upbringing of a of, of family. Right? The family, the, the, the definition of the family unit is no longer a man and a woman. Now it's two dudes and two females and there's subjugation and submission and dogs and cats and shit. I mean, they're running us down here. You know, so, you know, what is God's will for humanity, for us to make disciples, for them to teach them all that he has commanded? On the gay side is to teach them how to be fast, right? On the community side is to teach them how to be fast. On the LGBT, right? On God's will is to, is to preach the word in season and out of season, to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Remember, we're representing a kingdom, but... In the community, you know, Americans' will for America is what? For us to preach homosexuality, LGBT, turn all men into facts. And, and with it comes the submission and subjugation, right? We're called to baptize, the Bible says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
baptize them in the scripture and also baptize them in the, in the, in the Holy Spirit, right? But in the community, you don't baptize them. What do you do? Right? You join the association of clubs and you know and fans. You don't you don't get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You join the association. You wear the hood, right? You either wear the hood or you you wear or you take it off. It's either you put it on or take it off, whichever direction you go in, right? Whichever way your heart ends up at, at the end of all the testing or trying or whatever it is. You know, God's will is for us to be the church. Their will is for us to, to do what? Get sick with HIV. Right? So what goes inside of the Christian is the Holy Spirit that makes them the church. What goes inside of the, the, the community is the sickness of HIV. Right? And some, some have gone as far as de uh, AIDS. God's will is for us to um, heal. Right? Right? For, for, for us to heal others, to pray for them for healing, right? For the community, it's not healing, it's death. It's death. Um, so it's back and forth here, right? In the church, the, 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 the will of God is, is liberty in the Holy Spirit. In the community, on their Americans, American community, it's slavery. Right? On the Lord, the Lord's will is a straight marital sex. In the community, it's, it's gay sex. Right? It's gay sex. Um, in my situation, God's will for me is the two bedroom. That's what he puts on my heart. The community is two curtains. This is this is the community's position. You go ahead and buy yourself a curtain. Right? To divide your bed from your office. Whereas if I was in the church ministry, it would be two separate rooms. You sleep in one room and you have your office in another room. Right? The office of the ministry is not where you put your wife to lay her to bed. But the community, you could be in the office or you could be in the bedroom doing your thing. There's no boundaries, right? In the community, there's no boundaries. Um, God's will is for us to be a congregation, right? In the community, it's competition where we divide. Um, in, the, in, the, in the church, in the Bible, God wants a congregation who is united in loving God and loving Christ. In the community, it's it's competition. All men for themselves, and we're all competing for the submission. Right? Or so at war with each other here. In the in in the Bible, God's position concerning the Africans is that they're the image of God. Right? Man is the image of God, and sin is the problem. In America, black Africans are the problem, and skin is the problem. You understand? The problem in America, on God's side, is they are the, the, the image of God, but there is a sin problem, which is in the heart. But on the American side, the issue is black-skinned men and women and children. Um, so we have an African problem with skin. So one says skin, the other one says sin. So God's view and man's view are clashing with each other. Right? Again... The Bible tells us what is the will of God. His love. There's God's love. You come over to the community side, it's gay love. Right? Or same-sex love mixed with shit. Right? So you have Adam and Eve on one side, and you have same-sex on the other. Right? You have wives um, on one side, and you have gay partners on another side. Um... On one side, the color black is, you know, on God's side, the color black is the universe outside of the earth. On the, on the community side, the color black is for funerals, communicating death. Right? Uh, on one side, it's born, God wants us to be born again. And on the community side, they're all unbelievers. Um, 
God on the on God's side, God calls men to be pastors. In the community, they're called to be police. Right? Pastors versus police officers. Um on God, God's will, on God's side, Christ is Lord, and He is God, and He is the head of the church. On on the on the community side, they're antichrist. They don't see Christ as Lord, as God, or as the head of the church. Right? On God's side, it's the cradle. That that gives us a fresh new beginning. On the community side, it's the grave that finishes our, our, our days. So from the cradle to the grave. God begins us, but it's the community that ends us. Right? So those of us that love God's will, we call ourselves the church. But those who love the world and who love Americanism, they call themselves the community. Right? Some of us, we pray. The community, they don't pray, they persecute. We pray for God's will. The community persecute to find out the outcome of their own will. They judge you to see what, 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 what it is that's supposed to happen. Whereas we pray for for God's will to intervene. Um, on the church side, we profess the faith. The community, they pretend. So sometimes you go to a church and you have a group of people pretending to be Christians. Whereas us, we profess the faith all day and all night. You know, we make a fool out of ourselves. We look like a bunch of idiots. Here we are going into a place of pornography, doing things that we ought not to do. Go, peeping at things that we ought not to peep. But if you don't go to them, they will come to your house. They'll put it in your trash. They'll make it visible. They'll leave you the information. They'll send it to you packaged. Just like we, when we send it to them packaged with invitation, come to church on Sunday and hear this great revivalist. So, you know, with everything that I've blabbered this last hour, I don't know if you, you'll probably get anything out of it, but I think it's a disfavor for the church and for the, this nation um, if we continue in this direction, at least with me. As I'm talking to you, I could feel um, my eyes shutting down and, you know, I don't know if I'm breathing wrong kind of you know air but I can tell you right now though that it's um, this is not the way that I would have wanted to live at the age of 44 these are not the type of videos that I would have wanted to make this is not the direction that I would have wanted to go right obviously something is wrong and if I'm still producing these videos and I'm still coming out and saying I'm dealing with the community on this level, something obviously is not right. right? Obviously. I mean, how obvious do I need to be? Um, and so I would caution you to be careful with these people calling themselves community. I would caution you internationals and I would caution your church leaders. Be careful not to give too much. Give in too much to the community side because it may swallow you up, right? And make you do things that you normally wouldn't have done if you had just followed God's will, right? And it's a decision that we make every day. Are we gonna go in God's direction or are we gonna go in the community's direction? The Bible says, give to God what is God, give to Caesar what is Caesar, right? What does God want? God wants holiness and sanctification. Caesar wants the opposite. You can't be on both sides of the track. When you're on one side, they're persecuting you out of the side and telling you to go to the other side, right? When you're in the church, they persecute you out and forces you to go to the community. When you're in the community, it forces you out to go into the church and back and forth. And so the only thing I would tell you is, um, you know, if you know me in the community, I'm not community. I'm just enduring. Uh, if you know me in the church, I am the church, and I'm the enduring. Um, if you have questions in regards to what I said today, you can email me at kevinluco2 at hotmail.com, and I'll try to give you a, a, a cleaner answer. I'm kind of like slurping, slurring right now because my eyes are burning. I'm tired, and I don't know um, why I'm breathing. You know, I don't know if the room is, is filled up or if it's my body has just dropped so I'm going to put an end to this video. 
uh, I would say to the church, pray for me, because this is unpleasant for me. I'm having to go through this by myself. And at the age of 44 and being sick as I am, it's no, it's no picnic for me. This isn't fun. You know, this is insulting. This is painful. And so I got to deal with it on every level and every establishment. I didn't know Americans were still pursuing African men for subjugation. I really didn't know that. And now that I do, it's a heartbreak. Right? It's a heartbreak. Anyway, I'm going to let you go and um, pray that God will be merciful to both your side and mine. Right? God bless you.